Welcome. Welcome everyone to the um, CLG for Martinborough and Greytown wastewater treatment plants. Um, thank you everyone for joining tonight. Um, might, we're a really small group, or you know, small enough, might whiz around and just quickly introduce yourselves, um, starting with Adam, please. Yeah, kia ora koutou, ko Adam toko ingoa. Uh, so my name's Adam, I uh, work for Wellington Water, I'm the program delivery lead, looking after the capital program we've got running for South Wairarapa. Thank you. Um, I'll go to Louise, please. <clears throat> Yora Louise Brown, um, the chair of the Great Town Community Board. Yora, thank you. I'm Amy Smith. Hey everyone, Amy Smith, Wellington Water Senior Wastewater Treatment Engineer. So, had a lot to do with these wastewater treatment plants. Yora, thank you. And to you, Nick. Uh, kia ora kato, uh, Nick Hewitt, uh, um, my name is Nick Hewitt, I'm the uh, head of network performance and largely responsible for operational compliance of Wellington Waters water and wastewater treatment plants. Kia ora Nick, um, Aaron please. Good everyone, my name is Aaron Johnston, I'm the com compliance lead for Greater Wellington uh, on the Greater Town and Mountainborough wastewater treatment plants. Aaron, uh, Rory. Hi everyone. Yeah, Rory in the comms and engagement team at Wellington Water. So um, provide comms and engagement support for the South Wairarapa uh, District Council, Council area. Yep. Kia ora, Rory. Stefan. Uh, kia ora, I'm Stefan Corbett, GM at South Wairarapa District Council. Kia ora, Councillor Aidan. Evening, everyone. Um, Aidan Ellams. I'm a councillor, uh, South Wire for District Council, also on the Martinborough Community Board. I uh, was on the board uh, the, for the previous triennium um, and portfolio lead for infrastructure for council. Thanks. Kia ora. Um, and Phil. Kia ora. Phil Vannan, Public Protection Officer from Health New Zealand. Kia ora, Phil. Um, and do we have Amy in the background? I think she, she signed out. She was just okay, uh, cool. making sure that we were, were all connected and, and, and the likes, and then she was um, going to sign out. Great, thank you. Is anyone in the background that I haven't had introduced? That's all I can see. Great, thank you. Um, all right, might move to you, uh, Nick, please, with an opening karakia. Yep, thank you. Uh, tu tawai mai i ranga, tu tawai uh, mai i raro, tu tawai mai i waho, tu tawai mai i roto, ki a tau ai ti mori tau. Ti mori ora ki a te katoa, ho mai e hui e kai taki e. Kia and then next we'll go to a quick refresh. I know um, slightly unusual sequence. I guess this CLG follows the CLG um, where we met in November, but chose to postpone till tonight. So effectively the um, previous minutes go back to March um, 2023, I think. Oh, sorry, November. Goes back to November. Um, and in terms of action points from that, there's only three major ones, which two look well and truly covered by tonight's agenda. So we've got Martinborough Wastewater Treatment Plant Abatement Notice. There was going to be a, an update from that and an update on the progress at Grace, Greytown Wastewater Treatment Plant. Both of those are very much part of the agenda. There was also Mana Whenua Engagement was down way back then, Rory. Could you very briefly update on where you got to on that item? Uh, yeah, I would need to come back to you on that one, I think. That's uh, Paul Clark that leads our Mana Whenua engagement. Do we have any more detail around specifics there, or is it just generally in terms of... I can answer that, look, Rory. Um, oh, yeah? Yeah, when Thanks, they get into... Yeah. Right now, or would you like the answer right now? Andrew, no, if it's, you... if it's yeah. part of the material you'll cover. Um, long yeah, that's it, cool. It's yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Yep. yep, that'd be great. great. Thank you. Like I said, it's the three flagged action points, just so we kind of close that loop. Um, is there any other um, 
items from you know effectively previous matters arising you know I wanted to raise at this point. Okay, um, and we've got tonight's agenda was pre-published and just following through that, we had done um, a very brief refresh on the CLG expectations and purpose, um, which I'll cover really briefly, I guess, you know, particularly for our audience listening. Um, the CLGs um, are a requirement of the consents and very much for the purpose of engagement um, from what I see as the independent facilitator, they play an incredibly important role in inviting um, community and mana whenua in particular, both the, the, the whole community, to join a conversation with um, both Wellington Water, um, any operators, South Wide Upper District Council and the Regional Council, the regulator, all in the same conversation. Um, and that's the, the real beauty of a CLG. Um, it doesn't um, make the problems go away, but what it does help is a, a fact-based conversation. Um, and I think um, certainly what we've seen at the other CLGs, um, kind of uniting everyone around a constructive effort for improving plant performance and environmental outcomes, but very much with the right of it, it is engagement. Um, and <clears throat> Stefan will probably have more to say about this as well. The, I think the other thing to remember, lots of the big answers here um, rely on capital investment and we at a CLG level need to be respectful of the um, consultation processes for long-term planning of the councils. And so that there's only so far we can take certain issues. It's with what's in the public arena. Um, but the key is engagement for community, um, mana whenua and all kind of local stakeholders to ask questions and get clarification so they can then um, seek more information or challenge or propose other things. Um, and at all times in these conversations, we're looking for a respectful, constructive, um, but robust dialogue. Um, Aaron, um, in terms of CLG, your understanding of the, the purpose of them as the regulator, anything you would add there? No, really, I think that's a pretty good summary. We're we're just keen to hear, um, you know, input from members of the community and mana whenua. Um, basically, just understand the position of people outside of the organisations, you know, that work on this day in and day out, and um, and incorporate those thoughts um, as well as obviously communicate um, back to them uh, progress on on all the compliance matters. Okay, um, thank you. Um, Stefan, would you have anything you'd add for the District Council expectations? Okay, thank you. Um, Rory, anything you'd add at Wellington Water? No, no, I think that's a, a good summary, Andrew. Nothing nothing further from my side. Okay, thank you. Um, and then in terms of conduct for the meeting, really simple, any of these meetings online, um, please... Um, we do have an agenda which we want to follow, but we also want to hear questions, um, you know, where they arise and where they're appropriate. So either raise a virtual hand if you can find that um, under reactions, otherwise just simply raise a hand and I'll spot that and um, and I'll invite you to speak as soon as I see a, um, as soon as possible appropriate point. Um, but we're also trying to let people share information so when questions are asked that speaker has had a chance to share what they were going to share um, so we don't go around in circles. Um, yeah, other than that, I think we're ready to go. <clears throat> um, the other, I suppose, Amy answering questions um, sent in advance from CLG members. I know that is a feature of this CLG that in, you know, you're trying to have question invite questions from the community to be posted in advance and um, make sure those are answered first. Have you got any to hand, Amy? Do you mean Amy Anderson? Oh, does it? Um, is it the yeah, South Amy does yeah, they're probably getting are they being posed by Amy, mm. answered by Amy Smith, perhaps? <clears throat> that might uh, need a follow up, Amy, eh, with, with the other Amy. We, uh, I haven't received we any. We, we haven't had any. No. Okay, cool. Yeah, so we had that as an item down. 
Very good. Okay, so we'll move um, forward to you, Amy Smith, for the um, high-level summary of annual consent reports and key themes. Cool. So I will just share my screen in a very... Were you going to share the, the presentation, Andrew? Or... Um, or I can do it. Yeah, hopefully you can. I've got it if I need to dig it out. So, sorry, this is a bit of a honky way of sharing it. But anyway, um, so I'm report talking about the annual compliance report. So what happens is that um, Wellington Water submits an annual report to Greater Wellington Regional Council. The period for which we're talking about in this CLG was July 2022 to June 2023. Uh, and then subsequently, Greater Wellington provides a compliance assessment back to us. And we received that in early 2024. So uh, that was circulated for your reading prior to this meeting, and I'm happy to answer any specific questions that you may have on that compliance report. But what I wanted to focus on tonight was how we move to achieving a compliance status at those at Greytown and Martinborough wastewater treatment plants. So uh, as you would be aware, so first of all for Martinborough, as you're aware, there is abatement notices or to-do abatement notices issued for that plant, and those um, that list of to-do items that we have at Martinborough um, from Greater Wellington, they clearly outline a pathway to, to um, moving towards compliance in the short term, some improvements, um, and Adam is going to run through those next. Uh, and then we also have um, a longer term project which um, works towards meaning that the, the Martinborough wastewater treatment plant is capable of achieving its um, con um, through to stage 2a consent compliance uh, and then at Greytown uh, we're also also non-compliant um, again we have a project underway that Adam will talk about which is um, moving the plant to a, to being capable of being compliant and then um, another piece of work that's been undertaken at for Greytown is what's called an efficacy report. So it's a piece of work that's been commissioned by an independent consultant and they have looked very comprehensively at that whole facility and just how it, how it, if it's being effective basically with its consent and how it can be effective in the future. Now that has been issued to Greater Wellington and that is being peer reviewed currently and I assume the outcomes of that will be carefully, um, the, the recommendations in that efficacy report will be carefully considered by Greater Wellington in how they consider our com, com, the non-compliance status of that plant. Uh, and then as you can see on the screen in, in Greytown we've had some success over the 2023-24 irrigation success irrigation season we've so far discharged actually since this presentation was written we're up to about 50 um 54,000 cubic meters of treated effluent discharged to land at Greytown it's a significant operational achievement which um meets the intention of the stage 1b consent uh, and What's really important to note here is that previously at the Greytown plant, previous irrigation seasons, we've only ever managed to achieve something like um, a maximum of a, in the 30,000 cubic metres to land. And that was actually during a COVID lockdown when um, there was um, nothing else happening on the irrigation field apart from irrigation. There was no, none of the competing constraints. And so other seasons, which is more normal, we've... Um, more norm, normal operating conditions we've only ever achieved sort of like the maximum of 25,000 cubic meters of treated effluent to land so this season the operators have done a really awesome job and with that um, with that operation there's been actually no discharge of treated effluent to the Papawai stream since um, late November 2023 so it's a really great outcome for Greytown. Excellent. Thanks, Amy. 
Um, Aaron, do you want to hold your comments till after Adam as well, or would it, is it easier to comment as we go? Um, yeah, I think it's probably easiest if I just say something towards the end. Okay, cool. Um, so Adam Matson, you're going to share um, project update on remedial works. Can you sh have you can you share sc screen from your end? I'll give it a go, but before I do. Um... Councillor Helams has got a uh, question in the looks. Oh, sorry, Councillor Adam. Aiden. Thanks, Adam. Thanks, Andrew. Um, Amy, um, you've uh, discussed um, how successful gradient uh, wastewater treatment plant is with the um, amount of uh, treated effluent discharged to the land. Um, how much, you know, for that same period, how much uh, effluent, treated effluent has been discharged for the Martinborough plant? over the 23-24 season. Yeah, I can um, dig out that information for you and get back to you during the meeting. Can't tell you off the top of my head. But I think the, um, the difference is that it's been a step change at Greytown. So previous, yeah, it's, it's, the improvement is relative to the Greytown um, non-compliance as assessment previously. Yeah. Yep, thanks. And as Amy, what do you attribute that major step change to? Um, <laughs> it's hard to say. So irrigation is very seasonally dependent weather conditions. Um, the operators have made some changes on how they operate the plant. We've had a lot more buy-in from the gliding club, which shares the use of the land. Um, so it's just like a whole lot of, it's like the perfect storm of improvements really, which is really, really cool. Cool. Okay. Thank you. Um, Aaron. Just had a question for, um, I suppose, Stefan or um, any of the South Wales Upper District Council people. Uh, is there any consideration given to, um, I guess, you know, removing the gliding club from the land discharge area and allowing the wastewater treatment plant to be, you know, to have full use of that area and any other competing land use? Uh, no, there's not at the moment. I think um, the hope of the council was that um, a suitable accommodation can be reached for multiple use on that on that land block. Thank you. Well, any other questions for um, Amy? Right, Adam, um, move to you on the project update on remedial works. Yeah, cool. Um, you can all see that. I'm sorry, jumping back to the other slides. Um, what I wanted to just, I just added in a slide here just to share um, some other piece of work that um, has been recently delivered actually through through the treatment plant operations team. So, um, you know, one of the, the small upgrades we managed to get over the line this, this financial year was to do some fencing um, of all the wastewater treatment plant ponds. Um, so in this case, the, the photos you see here are actually from the, the Greytown plant. But um, this was um, just a, a good news story to show that um, we've made some improvements there and in and, and particular around improving public safety. Um, there was the um, sad case out down, down Southland where... Um, uh, toddler drown in the pond so this is um a step in the right direction so just jumping over into the compliance upgrades project so we've got one for martinborough one for for Greytown, and i guess the the focus of these sort of slides will be on the the martinborough uh, abatement notices um, and then I'll touch on um, the bigger picture work. So this is kind of more seen as the, the short term work to get these uh, plants, in particular Martinborough, to a compliant state. And then we'll look at delivering further into the uh, longer term upgrades. So, um, yeah, again, just touching on some background and context context there again around um, the original abatement notice in August 22. Um, and then since then, we've worked to with uh, Aaron and the team around getting that replaced with three to do abatement notices, <clears throat> which are focused largely on these sort of three areas around the sludge in the, the ponds, 
um, undertaking an, uh, an inflow and quality monitoring program and also investigating um, how we optimize the UV setup at, uh, at Martinborough as well. Um, so this work, like so sort of saying, look, we're looking to program largely over sort of the next 12 months, in particular, the um, the influent monitoring program, something we want to to run for that full 12 month period through all the seasons so we can sort of see if there are any seasonal changes and what that might mean in terms of how we um, continue to improve the compliance state of the um, the plant. So this touching on the, the desilaging of the ponds. So this is um, something that's never occurred at the pond. So it's, it would be a huge win for, for the asset, but also for the community and, and moving these, this, um, in, in this case, Martinborough, but we're also looking to do Greytown at the same time towards um, a better operating state. So um, heaps of work's been happening in the background. Um, like I said, heaps of uh, assessments to assess um, how the the option and way we're going to be desludging and any potential resource consent requirements that um, associated. We've recently also completed the uh, an updated uh, sludge survey of the ponds, both Greytown and Martinborough, which will, will feed into the uh, tendering process that we do for this work. <clears throat> so uh, what else we've got? So the option that we're looking at uh, progressing with the two plants is what we call a geobag desludging option. So um, for that, before we can actually do the physical desludge, we actually just need to create a, a lay down pad area. So there's some physical works that we need to do. Um, and once we've got that over the line, um, then it's uh, basically in with a big vacuum truck that will then uh, remove the sludge and put them into bags um, adjacent to the, the ponds. Um, Couple of just quick pictures. These ones are a little bit outdated now. I haven't got the latest pictures, but this is to sort of show you roughly, um, you know, what what the sort of the surveys give us in terms of the sludge present. And um, uh, so this these these ponds here are from the Martinborough site. And um, yeah, if you if you want a rundown of how the the ponds work then uh, I think Amy's best to, to answer any questions on that. But this is pointing out some of the the um, the features of the, the plant. What's not shown in this picture is just out to the left is actually the irrigation area for the uh, Martaburra site. So just touching on the other couple of elements we're working on as well, uh, the influent flow and monitoring uh, program. So we've recently up, uh, replaced the flow meters to both the plants. Um, we've developed a sampling plan and we're actually looking at implementing that if it's not already uh, commenced. And we've also reached out to the two local iwi around um, a Tangata Whenua values, values monitoring plans as well. So that's an addition. And then lastly, also, uh, yeah, and then lastly is around the work looking into the UV uh, system at Martinborough and how we can optimise that that system to, to um to make sure it's working as, as optimal as possible, um, not letting through any um, any effluent that's not uh, meeting the conditions of the resource consent. Um, I think that's all I wanted to touch on those But So before I carry on, I might just see if uh, Councillor Elam has, a, has, a, has his hand up, so it might be in relation to some of these slides. Uh, thanks for that, Adam. Um, uh, I don't know if you can answer, uh, Adam, or perhaps Amy might be able to answer. But from that, um, that desludging that survey of the uh, of the pond, um, the sludge survey, um, what uh, what information has that added to um, uh, to the whole process? Um, you know, compared to when um, the abatement notices were first issued in 2022. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, further? Well, yeah, I think the the like the last survey was done a few years ago and the, the most recent survey will basically give us the latest picture around how much sludge we do have present and that way we can um, appropriately uh, capture that within the, the tender that we do so we know we're getting... Um, 
or the, the, the charge rates and the, the estimated cost to actually do the work. So, um, yeah, just making sure we've got the latest information that feeding into that contract. Yep. So, so um, sort of what level, um, what, what's the capacity level um, of the ponds, you know, as a result of all that sludge in there? Is it like at 50% or, or only at least 30% uh, capacity? So I can answer that question. Um, the capacity of a pond treatment system is actually defined by the surface area of the pond and the level of sludge in the pond, sort of the effect of that is actually, it, it, it reduces the efficacy of the treatment process and so you don't get the best quality effluent out of that pond that um, the pond should be able to produce because you've got that sludge layer which is actually um, carrying over out of that pond into the next stage so that the capacity issue and then the ability to treat effluent well is is two issues and the level of sludge in the pond is at a level where it, it needs to be removed so that we can produce we have a better chance of producing compliant effluent higher quality effluent higher quality effluent yeah broadly amy looking at that picture what would your educated guess be of a percentage so. Oh, so the well, the numbers previously were like it was between thirty and fifty percent full of sludge, just depending on the different oh, yeah. um, the areas where it's accumulated differently. Um, and anything that encroaches on the one, the top one meter layer of the pond is where it needs to be when it needs to be removed, because that that top one meter of the pond is where the the treatment happens, and uh, anything above that. Sludge in that top one meter layer is is bad. <laughs> Means the pond can't work properly. Thank you. And a question from me, um, just the, with the sludge. So I think you said that they're going to be in or put into bags adjacent to the ponds. Is that where it stays? And also, does would the public expect kind of significant smell or anything when that happens? Yeah, so it's it's there in a uh, a temporary fashion while it carries on and breaking down in the geo bags. Um, we've done. Um, it, there's not expected to be any odor, any odor issues with with undertaking this work. Um, uh, the idea it's there for for a few years before then you would you'd cut it off to to waste is the idea, to to an infill. That's right, it's Amy, a, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's a very commonly used system to take sludge out of a pond it sits in the bags it stabilizes over a couple of years and then it becomes a much more um a less odorous product to, like as it stabilizes and in, um inside that geo bag it, it just gives you a product that's much simpler to, to dispose of or or potentially um beneficially used potentially thank you um a question from from aaron yeah, more more of a point actually. Just letting everyone know that we have given um, consenting advice in relation to this activity, and um, it will be completed as a permitted activity. And one of the conditions of that activity, just going back to the question about odor, is um, that uh, you cannot have an offensive or objectionable odor beyond the boundary of the property. So. Um, we will be keeping an eye on that, and in the event that we find that there is a offensive or objectionable odors, um, yeah, we will be required to take action. So thanks, Aaron. Thank you. Um Amy, also you came back by the chat with um the answer to uh Councillor Ellum's mm. question about mm -hmm. the equivalent discharges at Mushroombrook. Um, yeah. That was, or do you want to share that maybe into the meeting? Right, yeah. So at Martinborough, the, for the similar season time period, uh, there's about 17,000 cubic metres of treated effluent discharge to land, but it is a different sized irrigation area to Greytown and it has a different discharge um, conditions. So yeah, just bear that in mind when you look at the, the two numbers. Thank you. Um, a question um, from Nick or comment. You're on mute there, mate. You're on mute, no. Uh, Nick, you're on, on mute. Of course I am. Um, 
Yeah, I think what we can do is we can provide some images of geo bags if, if, if there's an interest in it, uh, what they look like, and, and that we can just sort of provide a bit of confidence around what a geo bag looks like and and and, and the rest. Because as as um, I think it was either Aidan or Adam said, is it is widely used. So I just think um, we, we, we'll just add to 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 the. Um, to the material, just a couple of um, images and brochures about what a geo bag that is, what it does, and and the likes. Yeah, and probably and adding your expectations of how it should go, which hopefully lines up with um, Aaron's and the regional councils. Um, yeah. So hey. just to be clear for everyone on the meeting, the purpose of using geobags is that we get to spend the most amount of money on removing sludge from the ponds, which is what we all need to improve the treated effluent compliance. And so, yes, there is still a cost in disposing of that sludge that is removed, but it is um, the biggest priority is removing sludge from the ponds right now, and geobags is our answer to that. Thank you. Um, a question from Councillor Ellams. Thanks, Andrew. Um... I think is at the end of this end of uh, March. There's another um, uh, topical date um, for this process for um, information to be. Is that inf information to be submitted to GW or is, is that correct? Yeah, it's. Um, uh, I haven't got the date right in front of me at the moment. Uh, is it the eleventh? Maybe Aaron's got in front of him. We've got just an updated uh, progress report coming back through to 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 Aaron um, on those those conditions that we're working through at the moment. Uh, the final interim deliverables for the desludging are uh, the fourteenth of April, okay. and then that essentially um, satisfies the to do abatement notice. But the to do abatement notice for the desludging is broken into two, just because there was you know some uncertainty around final concept selection and the exact methods. So once we have that final report, then that will outline how the works, the actual desludging procedure will be undertaken and we will then issue a new to-do abatement notice which covers that and has a new deadline for completing that works and reporting back to us on it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, back to you, Adam, um, if you've got another slide. Yep. Yeah, um, what have we got? Yeah, just a couple more slides here. Uh, I guess I just wanted to to share, obviously, the immediate focus on these projects are the, the desludging work of those two pavement to-do no notices. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's not also forgetting that we've got a bigger picture of upgrades also that we are working to as well in the background. Um, so, again, just sort of setting the scene, this is like a... Um, you know, this is this is going to take a number of years to work through. It's it's not something that we're going to see dramatic change, you know, every CLG, but it's just useful to just a bit of a check in, provide a bit of an update and how we're going. So again, just trying to lay out the 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 picture around the different stages of in this case the, the two plants for both Martinborough and Greytown. Um, so you'll see that we're operating under stage 1B at the moment uh, with looking at moving to uh, the end of stage 1B deadline of, of 2031, which was this increased in uh, irrigation area. So this is about moving the plants to uh, land-based irrigation treatment. So over the next uh, you know, few years, well, a couple of years, um, we've still got a few other um you know, I guess smaller upgrades we'll be looking at tackling things that give us good bang for buck over the next um you know 12 to 18 to two two years type 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 frame and in the interim we're sort of designing up the thinking about the bigger picture and the infrastructure needs and the land that's needed to to upgrade these plants in the irrigation areas um by that 2031 deadlines for each of those two plants so um that's the the bigger picture and um like a sort of note there, you know, it, it requires significant capital investment and, you know, we're working with council with the uh, long-term plans to secure the, the right investment for that. Um, these, these last couple of pictures uh, just sort of show um, what's been um, the areas of land that's been sort of earmarked for future uh, land-based irrigation. So on the left was the Martinborough site, uh, Payne Farm, um, 
as as through that consent. And then on the on the right was the uh, Greytown side. Um, we've still got a bit of work just to get a consolidated piece of land, um, but we've got time to work through that and and get that as we work through with with council to get a suitable piece of land. So then we can then start designing up the infrastructure that's needed to to move that to increase further land land based irrigation um, at that site too. So any questions on those couple of slides? Uh, Councillor Ellams. Thanks for that, Andrew. Um, Adam, uh, with regards to Popawai, um, does Council uh, already own all of um, that land that, that's outlined, uh, site A, but site, site, sites B mm. and C's? Uh, yeah, from memory, it's the what you see in front of you, the areas in blue. Um, I can't recall who owns the areas in the light green. Uh, I think some of the, the pink, you can see a slither of pink, I think is owned by the, uh, I think the Papawai um, Land Trust or the Papawai Marae. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll work through with with um, the property team at council to, there's, a, there's always been a, a historical project here to go work through some some land swaps. Um, so we'll we'll work through with with council on getting a suitable piece of land as well for that. Thanks, Adam. And Adam, is that a, there's a plot of land across the river as well, is that right? Mm. Yeah, there is. Um, I can't remember a call off the top of my head, actually, if that's councils as well. Um, it may have something to do with the, the 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 glider club or something to do with the the entry or exit where the gliders take off potentially that's why it's on that side i'm i just trying to recall actually i can um take that away and come back if people have an interest in it and and what time frames are you know what what time frames would people expect of what happens next with these two big mm. upgrades mm -hmm. yeah um in this space, there's there's a lot of design work that will need still need to occur here. Obviously, in in the uh, Greytown side, we still need to uh, pin down the actual bit of bit of land that we're going to be uh, designing up this this future irrigation site. But for example, with with Martinborough, um, yeah, there's there's a good couple of years of of um, design work, probably some field testing, um, making sure. Um, yeah, we're we're working through the the criteria. Criteria. Um, there's also considerations around allowing or accounting for for future town growth, and there's some growth studies occurring right now. So there's probably a good um, couple of years, I'd say, at this stage of um, design work before we actually start really seriously thinking about putting shovels in the ground. I think in the next two years there will be still some some more minor capital upgrades that we'll look at doing things like um upgrading the screen uh, inlet screens which gives us um which is only improving the the current operation of the the plant is is um a good win for each of the plants but um yeah like I said it's it's going to be a bit of a, a slow journey from here um but there is a consent deadline for developing these yeah. two patches of land and that's in 2030 yeah so we've still got that hard deadline Um, and at that point, it would require new consents. Is that right? No, no, no. It's um, it's a stage a consent. So stage two A, which is the development of these two sections, these these irrigation patch, much larger irrigation patches, is um, a consent stage in the existing consent. The consents are to twenty. 35 year consents. So I think they're to twenty fifty one. Yeah. For twenty fifty. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Adam, if you um, set bring you to a close, it might be a good point to hear from Aaron yep, from the, in terms of the Greater Wellington Regional Council. Um, and yeah, Aaron, I guess back to the um, to the start of Adam's presentation or or you know where you feel is helpful to come in here. Yeah, um, yeah, so obviously, 
both of the compliance reports um, had some concerning non-compliances in them. Um, obviously, great. Martinborough is well understood in terms of where that consent is at, um, particularly around the effluent quality and some of the challenges with the limits on the volume of wastewater that can be discharged to the river um, within the constraints of that. And, um, and obviously, the preference to go to land um, and breach the land discharge consent as a as a preference, which um, certainly Greater Wellington supports um, in terms of the overall effects that that those non compliances are having. Um, just sort of, I guess, on Martinborough a bit further, we if we feel that um, you know uh, Wellington Water and South Wellington District Council have been excellent, um, very very um, willing to engage and obviously taking the initiative on um, providing some programs of work that they feel can really improve that compliance. So um, yeah, from that perspective, Greater, Greater Wellington's very happy with the overall progress on the um, on the compliance improvement program. And um, obviously there's still more, still more work to be done in implementing that program. The next 12 months will be key and um, potentially more work to, to happen beyond that based on the learnings from some of those programs around particularly the influent quality um, and um, volume study and then also the UV study I think will also be quite important um, being that the E. coli limits have been one of the key issues in terms of non-compliance with the plant in the, in the past. Um, it's also quite uh, encouraging that Payne Farm, um, I can see, I've seen recent sort of news coverage around Payne Farm and the long-term plan, and obviously there's some community pushback from that, but, you know, this is a consented, um, this is a consent-related issue. It's been proposed, you know, going back over a decade, and um, it is encouraging to see South Wilded Upper District Council progressing that option. Um, so, Yep, that's that's largely my thoughts on Martinborough. Um, Greytown as well, obviously has some challenges um, which have been noted in the in the most recent um, compliance report, annual compliance report, um, issues with effluent quality and um, breaching the volumes discharged to the river in the previous year um, for the basically the annual daily volume, uh, the annual average daily volume. Um, that was a, you know, obviously a very wet year, a very wet summer, and um, it's, it's encouraging, obviously, to see the improvements that have happened in um, in the most recent summer around that land discharge. We're we're very impressed with how well that has gone, um, in some pretty favourable conditions. It's fair to say, um, with the weather, um, it's been very dry in the South Wales upper regions. So that's um, that's something that we're you know. We're, we're, we're very pleased to see and I think that you know there is probably more work that can be done there around um, increasing those volumes and making that a consistent thing year on year to just you know obviously give the river the Papawai stream a break from um, ongoing wastewater discharges particularly in in the low low flows around summertime. Um, a few other things just compliance matters that have been noted um, the riparian planting program we certified a management plan about two years ago that is yet to be implemented. Um, there's some wetlands around the wastewater treatment plant that still need to be fenced off and planted up. Um, and yeah, there's still these ongoing challenges with the effluent quality and the volumes. Um, you know, the plant is, certainly appears to be under pressure with population growth and the, um, the consented limits are relatively tight. So um, yeah, we, we will be continuing to have those conversations with Wellington Water and South Wales Upper District Council. But um, one of the big developments has been the submission of the land discharge efficacy report, which is um, basically like an eight year, year eight status check on how um, how the consent is faring and whether it's operating within its consented limits for environmental effects. Um, that's currently under review by an expert that we've engaged. And so at this point in time, I can't say anything further about that, but in, in my opinion and the opinion of the council, this is you know obviously a very important status check and it's something that we're gonna be looking very closely at 
and will likely be having more conversations with um with Wellington Water and South Wales Upper District Council once the you know once the sort of um the full picture is available. So um yeah, I mean I'm <laughs> obviously um quite a lot to say on both of these plants, but I think it's probably fair just to leave it there at the moment. Um and you know we'll hopefully you know there'll be more to say in due course once um both the compliance improvement program at um Mountainborough and the um land discharge efficacy report at Greytown have sort of the situations have developed a bit further, I suppose. I'm happy to take questions. Councillor Ellums. Thanks for that. Um, Aaron, um, sorry, I've just, um, first time in one of these meetings, so I've just got, quite a, I suppose, quite a few questions. Um, I'm, uh, Aaron, I'm just keen, um, once um, the process that Adam outlined for um, the sludging and, and the influence uh, flow quality updating of the Marnborough uh, plant is completed, um, and those abatement notices are addressed. Um, do you envisage it, what sort of time frame do you envisage um, uh, it will take uh, before those abatement notices could be removed, um, and then and then council would be able to allow uh, further development um, in connections to the sewage uh, system in Marnborough. I mean, it, so uh, can I jump in? I don't think that Aaron should have to answer a question about growth. That's but yeah, I was just gonna say, I was just gonna say that that's really you know that's obviously a decision that was made by South Island Upper District Council. Um, so I can't really speak to that. Um, obviously, our our key focus is on um, achieving compliance with the resource consent, and um, just in terms of the process, I guess you've asked about the abatement notices. Basically, we would look to cancel those abatement notices once they once the to do items in them, the um, the required actions are addressed and met, and ideally within the timeframes that have been set and agreed in in, um, in consultation with Wellington Water and South Wales Upper District Council. We um, beyond that, I mean, it's sort of an open question. It's fair to say it would come down to how. Um, how much of an improvement we saw in the compliance with the consent and then um, there is obviously in the compliance improvement program there is further work that's identified to be done beyond the 12-month horizon so um, realistically there may be additional um, discussions around that I can't really speak to what those will look like at this stage but it's certainly you know all options are on the table um, I really cool. just to see the situation evolve a bit further. Thanks, Sarah. Um, Stefan, <clears throat> did you have a question or comment there as well? Thank you. Yeah, and I, ju I just wanted to chip in. Um, the removal of the abatement notice doesn't equal the ability for us to put new connections into the plant. The, um, the removal of the abatement notice means that we're within consent. We're operating within consent. And, and that means basically we're able to service the amount of connections that are currently in the plant. Uh, growth is a, is a completely different um, uh, story. And, and, and that, that is likely to be, um, you know, another couple of years forward as we, as we grapple with uh, the level of investment, <clears throat> taking into account the advice we're getting from uh, Wellington Water and GW on um, you know, the nature of the intervention. So uh, removing, getting the abatement notice off is just step one. Um, a quick question from me for you, Aaron, as well, just, I guess, for the public clarification. What's the difference between a to-do abatement notice and the, the standard one that it replaced? Yeah, so the standard one is called a cease abatement notice. Generally, that is um, effective immediately. So we require the actions or the um, or the um, you know the ongoing non-compliance to stop immediately. Um, whereas with the to-do abatement, we're recognising that there is obviously no way to turn 
the situation around instantly. It's um, a very complex situation with a huge number of moving parts and obviously large investment required in a, in a number of areas. So we are trying to work very closely with Wellington Water and South Wider Upper District Council to understand what are the reasonable timeframes. Um, obviously, you know, as quickly as possible, but recognizing that there are a lot of operational and financial constraints and making sure that the work gets done as agreed within those timeframes, it really just puts the process into a formal framework that allows it to, um, yeah, proceed properly and timely, in a timely manner. Thank you. Any other questions for Aaron? Um, Aaron, did you have any more um, comments you wanted to make? No, I think that probably covers my part. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, <clears throat> I guess we'll now move to um, any additional input from South Warapa District Council from you, Stefan. I don't have a lot to say. Um, I think um, I just wanted to say I want to acknowledge the amount of work that Wellington Waters teams are doing here. Um, you know, there's uh, operational work being done on the improvements. Um, there's people doing compliance plans, efficacy reports, uh, surveys. There's a lot of relationship work going on. And... Um, uh, thank you to the Wellington Water teams for the effort that's going into this. Uh, it's it's not, um, you know, we see it and we appreciate it on our behalf. Thank you. Um, and also, um, Aaron and colleagues at um, at GW, uh, you've been very firm with us. Uh, we understand um, what's required of us, and that's as it should be. But you've also been. Um, very good to deal with. Um, lots of good advice coming forward on pathways and consents, and um, and I think the engagement and the um, the communication is is really good. And I'm really keen to make sure that that carries on, and that we have a a transparent and we have a really um, uh, close uh, working relationship as we work through the problems that we've got on these two plants. And, and probably more problems as well, you know. But we'll just concentrate on these two at the moment. Um, so, you know, I'm happy with the way things are going and, and the way people are working together on this. We're, we're doing what we have to do and we're doing it uh, well. So uh, that's good. Obviously, the, the wider context here is, um, is, is com complex. Um, water reform is um, the elephant in the room and, and is, is a significant um, factor here on um, how we structure investment over a long-term horizon. Um, and there's a bit of uncertainty around that, but in the meantime, we just uh, do what we can to get these plants operating, first of all, within consent. Um, and of course, our annual plan opens um, very shortly, um, I think on the 5th. and um, and there'll be a number of issues there for people to uh, feedback on. Um, but of course, uh, it's um, the public are able to comment on any aspect of operation at the council as part of their feedback. And if they've got particular comments that they want to make about the operation of the Martinborough and the Greytown wastewater treatment plants, I encourage people to do that as part of their feedback to the annual plan consultation. Thank you. Thank you, Stefan. Um, I'll just throw a question to you, Louise, as well, um, in relation to the Greytown Community Board. Does the, um, you know, just in terms of the progress made at Greytown, does that kind of align with the information that's been flown through to you um, at the Community Board? And also, does, you know, do your kind of stakeholders there feel kind of included and engaged in, in the progress and steps ahead? Well, to be honest with you, um, I have only been on the, the, 
I've been on the board, uh, came in October last year. So I attended that November meeting. And so I only get these updates. This is a, when I've gotten the next update. So we don't probably get as many updates as maybe uh, Councillor Aiden does or South Wire Rap is. So uh, I'm only getting this information now, really, as it's being given to me. Um, it it would be nice for it to come a little bit more frequent. Um, I was pleased to hear about the increase in the percentage of the effluent across. And I was also pleased to hear that there wasn't discharge into Popeye Stream because I do know that those were concerns coming in last year. So those are good to hear. Um, I would like a little bit more information about the progress of the plans for the desludging. Um, I think the community would like to know that. We hear, we know that it's been <clears throat> progressed. Um, you mentioned, Amy, that you don't want to get within a meter of the surface because that's very bad. Um, the one thing I don't have an answer to, which I would like to know, is where do we sit in Greytown and in Martinborough um, as to meet, reaching, how far away are we reaching that bad area? Because obviously we don't want to reach that bad area of sludge while we're still getting to the progress of desludging. Um, so that is a, a question I, I was sort of, I like to hear everything. <laughs> um, and then I process it and have, but I, I am curious about that. And that is a question I would like to hear back on, if not today, um, you know, to, to hear it in the near future as to where we do sit. I think that's something I'd like to be able to report back to the board um, and to be able to sort of go back. So this time coming in, it's going to be a little bit better for me to be able to go back and communicate because when I came in last time I was new and where we sat and were before I didn't but now I can at least hear progress um, going forward um, but as far as um, do we hear we hear it sort of later so the more we can hear the more we get the better um, but that is something I would really like to have an answer to if we could in the near future. Yeah I can answer your question about the Greytown sludge levels sort of and so Adam, the sludge pro the sludge survey that Adam has commissioned will give us the latest sludge levels between Martinborough and Greytown. And then I believe um, we would be wanting to make a decision about how much sludge is taken out of Martinborough compared to how much is taken out of Greytown so that we end up with an optimized um, sludge removal out of both of those plants um, so that we get both of them down to a a good level because we don't want to just you know spend all the money in Martinborough and not take any out of Greytown or, or vice versa yep. so it'll be the sludge survey data will be available soon and then we can update you and the information will be used to optimize the desludging process thank you no worries thank you any other closing um questions or comments Phil Phil Vernon, I know you've been sitting quietly there. Did you have anything you wanted to contribute from health perspective? Not at this point, just really here to get an update. Yep. Thank you. Um, and one other thought, just picking up from Louise's comments and probably, I guess, to you, Aaron, the, the fact of that, you know, significant improvement in the discharge to land at Greytown from an environmental perspective, probably in relation to Papawai Stream, why is that, you know, such positive news over summer? Um, can, can I answer first and then Aaron can? Yeah. Because the Papawai Stream is a really small stream and we're discharging into it uh, and the treated effluent is a significant portion of that Papawai Stream. Whereas when you compare that to the Ruamahanga River at Martinborough, you know, it's a similar size treated effluent flow but it's into a much larger river so our you know our, our effect from the Martinborough plant into the Ruamahanga River is sort of pr proportionally smaller but that Papawai stream is very small flow and we have a significant we have an effect on it um, and that was acknowledged in the consent application and the purpose of what we're doing now to achieve the stage 1b consent 
intention is that we remove flow during the low flow conditions. We remove treated effluent during the low flow conditions. And so that's a, that's a concern for that community. It's a concern for, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's good that we are removing, the, completely removing the flow over summer during low flow. Excellent, thank you. Anything you'd add to that, Aaron? I think that's that's what I was guessing, but I was just wanting that clarified. <clears throat> Sorry, yep. Um, I mean, there's not really much I can add to that. I'm not an expert at all. I'm basically just worried about the compliance with the conditions as they've been set. But my other understanding is that obviously um, going to land, um, provided you're not exceeding the soil moisture content of that land, is um, very positive in terms of um, the soil taking up the contaminants and obviously then using them and treating them um, to create grass or whatever the crop is. So it's a, it's a far better option environmentally overall. Thank you. Yeah, it's really helpful around the, the purpose of what we're trying to achieve with, with this compliance. Um, any other um, closing questions or comments from around the meeting? Actually, um, Andrew, I do have something um, which I forgot. I should have added the slide into the uh, slide pack, actually. But um, we have a planting day event coming up. Uh, it's actually in relation to the, uh, the Martinborough Wastewater Treatment Plants. There's a historic uh, couple of overflows that occurred uh, back in 2020. And so um, I've been working with, with Stefan and others at council and organising a planting day event um, and also working with the Māori Standing Committee. So uh, for those who haven't already got the uh, the invite, I'm happy to share that uh, to the wider team, uh, to the wider group uh, part of um, part of this. So you're welcome to come along and be part of that as well. Um, so that's, that's coming up in a couple of weeks' time um, and it will be um, on the banks of the Rua Mahanga River. Great, thank you. Um, and lastly, any um, any thoughts on agenda items for the next CLG or um, suggestions of around timing of when the next meeting will be? I um I just wonder. Um, we still haven't cracked this, have we? Um, we have got uh, very little public participation. Um, and um, despite having improved the notice period for um, the meeting and um, the distribution of material, so uh, both those things are coming out early. Um, we're letting everybody know how important the meetings are. Uh, Amy's done a really good job of getting invitations in the diary and following up, but we're still um, not attracting a, much of a crowd. Um, and... Um, if anyone's got any ideas on how we enhance the participation of this um, of this meeting, in particular, how we get the public um, or you know to be involved or commu sorry community members of the meeting to be involved, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm all ears. There is a benefit in having it um, live streamed and people can 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 visit it. Um, but you'd have to be a pretty dedicated soul to do that, wouldn't you? Thank you. Um, thank you. A comment from Councillor Ellens. Thanks, Andrew. I think, Stefan, um, perhaps that might be something that you and I could have a conversation with uh, together to um, see as to uh, who we can perhaps get on board from both Martin Borough and Gradient communities to get some involvement um, so that um, there's a bit more awareness within those two um, two communities about, uh, about, about what this group is doing and um and uh and, and what's happening for our treatment plants going forward yeah thank you um I'd, I'd be really keen to do that aiden and thank you to you and louise for attending and and for the um the report you'll write for your respective boards um i got a question or comment from louise as well um, i was just wondering um i mean i know we're trying to get the wider community but it would seem appropriate to me that either, and I know they're busy, that we invite someone either from the Mari Standing Committee um, to be a part of this. 
liaison group just as a general invite person and see if there was alternatively um because i heard you mention and uh an importance of mana Venoa is that you know i i, I think even even if we reached out to either of the lo of the Martin Vermeer or um to the Great Tom Rye to see if, if anybody uh from their sort of board or committee would I, I just would think that would at least help somewhat with maybe the even feedback into the community, even if we can't get the community members there. But I do sort of feel like that a member would be appropriate. They they are invited, Louise. Uh, we well, have, I don't we say have... they're not. I'm just but we yeah. haven't we haven't expanded out to I know the Mari Standing Committee is uh, do we have invites out to the Yeah, we have and any we as well. Okay. Mm. Well, I'm supposed to, hopefully I'm supposed to have a meeting um with uh a member from the Papa White Mari in regards to Matariki. So I might follow that up and see if I can get someone to put their hand forward. Thank you. I think they genuinely would get a lot out of being in this in this meeting. I really do. And uh so any any efforts that can be um, put into encourage participation, we would really appreciate that. Thank you. Sorry. And I guess from the video side of it, in terms of sharing this meeting, are you able to track, you know, what traffic at all it gets, or perhaps um, the likes of Louise or Councillor Allen's, you know, are you able to shoulder tap any other key members to? even quickly view parts of it, you know, direct them to the view this key part, there's the, where they are sharing ABC and see if that just trickles it out. Yeah, we we'll, we'll certainly will be um, letting all the, I think there's 38 people invited to this meeting. Um, we'll certainly be letting them know that the video is available and um, mm -hmm. um, encouraging them to view it. Yep. Cool. And even, you know, highlighting a key bit, you know, at such and such at the, 23rd minute, you'll be able to see there was Amy describing such and such, or there's commentary direct from Aaron Johnson on behalf of the regional council about whatever. And it might just um, pique some interest and they might get interested in two minutes worth and watch 15. Um, who knows? And then maybe attend the next one. Um, a comment from you, Nick. Yeah, so, so we've had um, a, an email come through from Mel Maynard from the Martinborough Community, Community Board. Um, they just got out of hospital today, so um, uh, she's looking forward, he or she, sorry, uh, uh, looking forward to to uh, getting the video and, and having their, um, having the, uh, providing some feedback on the video. Yep, great. And does the video get, it'll get recirculated to everyone on the invite list as a link? Is that what happens? I don't know. I don't know, Zoom. Sorry. Um, <laughs> Stefan, I, is I'm that... hoping that when we when we close down the Zoom meeting that uh, Amy can pick up the, the video, Amy Anderson can pick up the um the um, uh, recording. Does it, is anyone familiar? I think with... that's the idea, and that yeah, that's that should work. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that should be no, recording. Great. All going well. All right. Thank you. Well, we might wrap up there, and it sounds like we'll leave the <clears throat> leave the ball in court of when the next CLG is. It'll depend on um, how. Is there a, um, a minimum expectation, Aaron, of when the next one would be? Yes, uh, I believe that there is two CLGs built into one of the to-do abatement notices. I haven't got them in front of me, so um, my recollection is it's around August. Yeah, yeah, August. You, you did right, Aaron. August uh, around then is the next one. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> Great. Thank you. Might you move to you, um, Nick, then to close the meeting with a karakia. Una here, una here, una here, ki te uru tapanui. Kia watia, kia mama te nokau, tia tinana, tia wairua, ki te ara tangata, koia ra i rongo. Whakaria here, akei ki ranga, kia tina, tina huei takie. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Nick. Thanks for your attendance. Nā mihi metipo. Thank you, everyone. No, thanks, thanks for coming along. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Thanks, Nick. Thanks Andrew. Awesome.